Good day. I'm Dr. Dan Jones, past president of the American Heart Association and professor of medicine and physiology at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Today with me is co-chair of the new ACC AHA guidelines on blood pressure management, Dr. Bob Carey. Dr. Carey is Dean Emeritus uh, and professor of medicine at the University of Virginia. Uh, Dr. Carey, thank you for being with us. It's a real pleasure, thank so you. So we're gonna talk about the definition of hypertension. And uh, if I look at the guideline broadly, it seems to me that a new definition of hypertension may catch the attention of people and perhaps may be the most controversial part of the guidelines. Could you explain to the audience why the new definition of hypertension and why now? Well, the last guideline that was comprehensive was published in 2003 and recommended a cut point for the definition of hypertension of 140 over 90. And since that time, we've had uh, a lot of studies uh, reported on uh, the ob observation of the risk, uh, cardiovascular risk, of blood pressure below 140 over 90, and then clinical trials on lifestyle uh, to help reverse that risk, and also drugs to help control the risk. And all of this information has uh, led us to realize <coughs> that people below the old cut point of 140 over 90 have substantial risk that's not being addressed appropriately. And so we made the decision to reduce the cut point for definition of stage one hypertension from 140 over 90 to 130 over 80. And we also made some additional changes. We eliminated the term pre-hypertension from the old guideline and substituted elevated blood pressure. And the reason we did that was to um, alert both patients and physicians that risk is not something that occurs in a blip, but it's something that occurs gradually and progressively over time and that uh, risk increases as blood pressure increases. And your, your actual risk, if you have a systolic blood pressure of 120, uh, doubles if your systolic blood pressure rises to 130. So that is the reason that we made that decision. I think it's a good decision. It will alert particularly people to the need for a lifestyle modification at an early stage, and I think has the hope of preventing hypertension for a large segment of Americans. So w one of the uh, criticisms that you might anticipate regarding this change, this lowering of the threshold for the definition of high blood pressure, might be that uh, the question, did the committee simply lean on one study, uh, the SPRINT study, uh, to uh, lead them to decrease uh, the number for the definition of high blood pressure? I can answer that very clearly. Absolutely not. Uh, the, we considered a mass of information which was both observational or epidemiological and uh, clinical trials, and there were many clinical trials that we considered. We considered the meta-analysis of those trials and we came up with a body of information that was very compelling and even independent of SPRINT was statistically significant in terms of the risk for blood pressures between uh, 130 and 140. So you're, you're saying for those who take the time to read the guidelines through, they will find ample evidence for the decision to lower the definition of high blood pressure. We tried to articulate the evidence as best we could. Uh, it was a comprehensive uh, effort to examine the literature, and um, we, we think we caught most, if not all, of the evidence. So what would you say to a frustrated uh, clinician um, uh, who uh, might say to you, well, Dr. Carey, I've, 
I've used this number so long, I've, I've convinced all my patients this, is, this number was sent down from heaven uh, and, and that we shouldn't change this number, that this is their number that they've got to, they've got to go for. How, 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 what, what would you say to that clinician who is frustrated by the idea that they now will have to have another conversation with their patients about yet another number and explain it to them? Well, I would say to that physician that you have a great opportunity to recognize and deal with risk that we haven't dealt with before. And uh, I think it's an exciting opportunity. It's an opportunity that will have an impact on a huge number of, of Americans. And what would you say to the 35-year-old young man who blood pressure on his last visit was 136 over 84, and his doctor smiled and said, your blood pressure is perfectly normal. Go on and live life and enjoy. And now he comes back for a visit and his doctor tells him, well, with that same number, you actually have high blood pressure. Well, yes, he has high blood pressure for sure. Um, but what I would say is that there needs to be an assessment of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk at that point. This is a young individual, and it's very likely that this individual has a low risk for cardiovascular disease overall, and that his blood pressure is high. And in that case, we would opt for uh, non-pharmacologic or lifestyle therapy. Bob, thank you so much for this conversation. I understand this part of the guidelines better, and I believe our audience will understand it better as well. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it.